July 17, 1981. It's a warm summer evening in Kansas City. Inside the Hyatt Regency Hotel, the air is filled with the sound of music, laughter, and conversation. The hotel's grand atrium is alive with energy. Hundreds of guests have gathered for the hotel's popular tea dance, a social event that brings people together each week. On the lobby floor, couples dance to the music. Above them, guests lean against the railings of the suspended walkways, looking down at the dancers below. The walkways themselves are striking, elegant, modern, seemingly integrated into the hotel's architecture. They create a sense of openness, allowing guests to observe the event from multiple levels while still feeling connected to the energy below. The night continues. The crowd sways to the music. Conversations carry across the vast atrium. Then, 7.05 p.m. A deep metallic snap cuts through the air. For a split second, everything is still. Then, without warning, one walkway collapses onto the one below. In an instant, both plummet into the crowded lobby. A deafening impact echoes through the atrium. The force of the collapse tears through the structure, sending shattered concrete, twisted steel, and broken glass crashing to the ground. People standing directly below have no time to react. The sheer weight of the falling structure crushes everything beneath it. Dust and debris fill the air, muffling the screams of those trapped in the wreckage. In just moments, the atrium, once a place of music and celebration, have turned into a scene of devastation. Survivors stumble through the dust, disoriented. First responders rush in, pulling people from beneath the rubble. But what exactly caused this disaster? In this video, we'll break down the engineering behind these walkways, analyze the fatal design flaw, and reveal how a single small modification led to catastrophic failure. Within minutes of the collapse, emergency responders arrive at the Hyatt Regency Hotel. First responders, hotel staff, and bystanders rush to search for survivors, pulling people from beneath the rubble. The scene is chaotic. Smoke and dust linger in the air. Steel beams and shattered concrete block every path. The collapse leaves 114 people dead and 216 injured, making it one of the deadliest structure failures in U.S. history. As rescue efforts continue, investigators arrive at the scene and begin gathering accounts from those present. Witnesses describe a sudden, violent drop with no warning, followed by a sharp metallic snap and a deafening crash of concrete and steel striking the lobby floor. While these accounts confirm what occurred, they do not yet reveal why it happened. By examining the wreckage, they begin analyzing their remaining support structures searching for signs of material fatigue or construction errors. To understand why the walkways failed, we first need to examine how they were originally designed and constructed. The hotel's atrium was its defining feature, an open four-story space spanned by three suspended walkways on the second, third, and fourth floors. These elevated walkways provided access between the upper levels while preserving an open view of the atrium below. The second and fourth floor walkways were aligned directly above one another, while the third floor walkway was offset to the side. Each walkway measured approximately 2.7 meters wide and 36.5 meters long, weighing around 30 metric tons. The walkways were supported by three cross beams, which were box girders formed by welding 200 millimeter wide C-channel strips together lengthwise, creating a hollow core. Designed to support both their own weight and the live load of guests, the walkways appeared to float above the atrium floor. Each of these walkways was suspended using three pairs of 32mm diameter steel hanger rods, which extended upward and were anchored to the ceiling structure. The entire system relied on these rods to transfer the walkway loads to the ceiling. These rods were inserted through holes at the top of each end of the cross beams and secured at the bottom with a nut. A washer was positioned between the nut and the beam, helping to distribute the load evenly. In the original engineering design, a single continuous pair of rods was anchored to the ceiling structure and intended to pass through the cross beams of both the second floor and the fourth floor walkways. With the nut in the middle of the rods holding the fourth floor walkway and a nut at the bottom holding the second floor walkway. 
However, the fabricator of the rods objected that the entire length of rods below the fourth floor would have to be threaded in order to screw on the nuts to hold the fourth floor walkway in place. There was a concern that the threads would be damaged as the fourth floor structure was hoisted into place. To simplify installation, a minor change was proposed, one that would have devastating consequences. Instead of using a single continuous rod, the final design used two separate sets of rods. The first set would suspend the fourth floor walkway from the ceiling, while the second set would suspend the second floor walkway from the fourth floor walkway. In the original design, the load from each walkway was intended to be independently transferred to the hanger rods. Each set of crossbeams supported only one walkway, meaning one could be lifted without affecting the other. However, even in the original design, the walkway structure was barely capable of supporting the expected loads and would not have met the Kansas City Building Code requirements. In the new design, the entire weight of the second floor walkway was transferred to the cross beams of the fourth floor walkway. As a result, if you lift the fourth floor walkway, the second floor walkway moves with it. While the total load on the hanger rods remained the same at the top, the nuts on the upper rods now supported the combined weight of both walkways, effectively doubling the load on the cross beam to rod connection, a load that far exceeded its structural capacity. Due to a series of miscommunications between the fabricator and the engineering firm responsible for the walkway design, the fabricator implemented the new design under the assumption that it was structurally sound. As later investigations determined, the connection that failed was never designed. No engineering analysis was performed to ensure its strength. In 1980, the Hyatt Regency Hotel opened its doors with this fatal flaw embedded in its structure. For months, the walkways bore the weight of guests without noticeable issues, but the forces acting on the lower connections were quietly accumulating. The fourth floor box beam, subjected to excessive stress, began to weaken, aggravating the strain on the welded connections. At exactly 7.05 p.m., one side of a box beam on the fourth floor walkway split open along the weld, causing the nut and washer on the hanger rod to slip through and break free. As the first connection failed, the sudden redistribution of weight overloaded the remaining connections. Within moments, they gave away in rapid succession. The fourth floor walkway failed catastrophically, plunging directly onto the second floor walkway beneath it. Overloaded by the sudden impact, the lower walkway could not withstand the force, and both structures crashed into the densely crowded lobby below. The Hyatt Regency walkway collapse serves as a tragic reminder of the critical importance of clear communication, thorough oversight, and ethical responsibility in engineering. The failure to properly review and assess design changes led to one of the deadliest structural failures in U.S. history. The Missouri Licensing Board filed a complaint against the engineering firm and two of its engineers, responsible for the structural oversight of the walkway design. They were found guilty of gross negligence, misconduct, and unprofessional conduct, resulting in the revocation of their engineering licenses in Missouri and Texas, while the firm lost its certificate of authority. However, despite these professional consequences, they were acquitted of all criminal charges. Civil lawsuits later led to substantial settlements for the victims and their families. The lesson of the Hyatt Regency collapse is clear. Engineering mistakes have real consequences, and those consequences can be measured not just in numbers, but in lives lost. It's time to announce the winner from our last video, the Coliseum poster giveaway. Congratulations, and thank you for your comment. For this video's giveaway, we're offering a brand new poster featuring a vehicle we explored in our differential video. To enter, like this video, subscribe, and leave a comment below, telling us what surprised you the most about the Hyatt Regency walkway collapse. We'll announce the winner in our next upload. And if you'd like to grab a copy right now and support the channel, the link is in the description and pinned comment. And as always, a huge thank you to all of our Patreon and YouTube membership supporters. Your support helps us keep telling stories like this one. Until next time, stay curious.